All right, uh, there's a smart recovery at play right now. You're watching the newsroom. I'm Ajay Sharma. Uh, look at that. Almost breaking into the green. Nifty has come back above the 22,000 mark. Pull of the back Nifty, small cap, mid cap. And you would see that all the parts of the market, not only large caps, are witnessing very sharp. In fact, uh, Nifty Bank is now into the green. Mukul Kochar is now joining us uh, uh, from Investec. He's, of course, head of uh, institutional equities there. Uh, Mukul, uh, good afternoon. So nice to have you on the show after a long time. You've been working very hard. Uh, your company is doing well. Talk to us about the conversations you're having. Uh, you know, I'll talk. I'll come to your very interesting note which you put out, uh, high frequency data story in charts. But just anecdotally, you must be interacting with a lot of clients lately. And top of the mind is elections. What are the range of uh, outcomes which are? What are the kind of hypothesis you're building in? It may not be a very large issue for a long term, but for the medium term, clearly, it is a, something to watch out for as a monetable. Yeah, Ajay. So, you know, what makes this election more interesting than some of the others in the past is uh, the level of complacency uh, that we went into uh, the elections with, right? Let me sort of, uh, you know, elaborate that on a little bit, on that a little bit. Um, so the multiples were actually quite punchy, stocks had worked. There's actually, honestly, it reflects the business momentum in the economy. I think the business momentum in the economy is very, very strong. But there was pre-elections hardly any debate about what is going to happen in the election account, uh, uh, outcome. So there was this general sense that, okay, elections are done deal. <clears throat> uh, now, that conversation has changed a bit. Uh, I'm not saying that outcome is uh, any different or we expect the outcome uh, to be any different versus uh, uh, what we thought, uh, you know, three or four weeks back. Having said that, the range of outcomes, if the election does give you a surprise, is so steep. So at one end, we are looking at maybe 10 to 20 percent downside, uh, you know, depending upon who you speak to. Uh, and on the other hand, upside is, I mean, if, if uh, you know, uh, is going to be fairly muted or, or there's going to be somewhat there if, if uh, outcome is as expected because that's largely priced in, right? So even though the probability of a negative or a disappointment in the election for the markets uh, is very, very low, the outcome or the, the impact is going to be so severe that everybody today has stood up and started paying attention to what's happening to election-related news flow. So there is a definite change versus three weeks back to our conversation around this. Right. Now, where does the... I mean, uh, you made a very interesting point about the business momentum in the economy. You also speak with the scores of uh, companies of all shapes and sizes. One view uh, is that, uh, you know, this earnings season we are seeing that the top-line growth is not very healthy across sectors. Only certain sectors are showing top line growth. And the margin expansion, which last few quarters they were showing because of lower commodity prices, may be also at risk in the coming quarters. So what have you made of the earnings and also this business momentum which you are referring to, how will it translate to earnings in the next few quarters? So let me first talk about the business momentum and then you know I'll, I'll address the earnings question. Ajay, both are good questions, right? So. You know, when we speak about the economy today, you cannot isolate, uh, you know, a very major global economic event that happened two years ago, which is COVID, right? So COVID, uh, you know, created substantial stress in household savings across, you know, across the world globally. In the US, the federal government ran massive de de deficits to supplement those savings. So the consumer is very strong. In India, we did nothing like that. So the consumer obviously is still uh, feeling the, you know, still the brunt of what happened during uh, COVID. However, when we are forward looking, uh, you know, outlook is exceptionally uh, sort of good here, right? So the consumer is recovering, then pockets the consumer is good, two-wheeler sales have been exceptional, even though they're off pre-COVID. Where we, uh, where, uh, you know, we derive our optimism uh, from is the nascent shoots and private capex cycle. And uh, Ajay, I remember I spoke about this in your last show as well. Uh, we expect the private capex uh, cycle to be exceptionally strong over the next three to five years. This is, you know, if the current dispensation continue and this stability and, you know, uh, 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 we expect the private capex momentum to be exceptionally strong. And that is predicated on the fact 
that BSE 500 earnings have been very, very strong over the last three to five years. So post-COVID, pre-COVID uh, earnings, BSE 500 were four to five trillion. In FY25, we expect that same earning for BSE 500 to be 14 and a half trillion rupees. Our analysis also reveals that the private companies have a tendency to invest whatever PAT they make or whatever profit they make back into CapEx. So we expect almost 7 to 8 trillion rupees of incremental private CapEx to come into the economy, which is not a small, num a small number. This is $100 billion. It is also roughly 70 to 80 percent of the base central government CapEx that we do in every, uh, in every year. So we expect private capex to be strong, which is going to drive GDP growth, employment, and you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, more healthy consumption going forward. That's that's the reason why I'm saying business momentum is strong. Um, coming to your question on earnings, right now, earnings for the last actually um, a year and uh, you know two years has been, as I said, 14 and a half trillion rupees. This is based on substantial year-on-year -year earning growth. So up till FY24, earnings have been strong, margins have been expanding, uh, which is what has been driving the market rally too. Uh, by the way, I mean, uh, this entire market rally where people have made decent money from markets has been driven on the back of earnings growth. Multiple has barely expanded. Uh, we are at five-year average multiples in the market, right? So it's, it's, it's a very healthy market, which is which we see today. Going forward also, I expect earnings to be healthy. Uh, one small pointer to you, as you mentioned about margin. Uh, there is a decent difference between your input cost inflation, which is measured through WPI, that is roughly 0% today. And CPI is at 5%. And I don't want to complicate it too much. All I want to say is that companies have more pricing power today or they're able to exert more pricing power than the input cost inflation they're seeing. So I think margins going forward are also going to be healthy and we'll see reasonable expansion in that. So uh, let's talk about uh, earnings quality momentum from here on. Which sectors do you think? Because BSE 500 actually is a very good representative. It actually uh, covers a breadth of sectors and of course the larger indices have very narrow in my view. But uh, which sectors in your view will lead the earnings momentum even from here next two to three years? Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, a, you know, uh, again, a good question. So, uh, on, we're very bullish on financials, Ajay. <laughs> uh, you know, on a sequential basis, financials across the board, all lending franchises have seen uh, uh, a very, very strong growth. Uh, so, for, for instance, you'd be surprised on a sequential basis, PSU banks have registered north of 25% as a fact, sequential basis fact growth. Uh, similar, uh, you know, uh, double-digit growth in private banks. So financials across the board. And we think, you know, given RBI's sort of actions in the sector, uh, advances growth will be uh, differentiated across franchises, uh, you know, pricing power, which will create pricing power in the sector. NIMS or margins in banking sector will stabilize. So good profit growth going forward as well on the back of reasonable sort of profit. This combined with the fact that the sector itself has not, work too much in the last couple of years. We are quite bullish on the lenders, right? Um, uh, in the financial space, we are also, we also like other sort of plays like life insurance, you know, general insurance, as well as uh, wealth managers, right? So, so the financial space, we are really positive. Uh, we also expect good earnings momentum. We are also quite positive, by the way, on pharma, which is on the basis of, um, you know, just more capital discipline in the sector. And uh, we've had an analyst who's had a very good call on the space, very, very counter consensus. He continues to be bullish. Um, uh, so that's another sector, uh, you know, we, we are backing. Uh, automobiles, really, really like automobiles, uh, you know, two wheelers especially see further upside on earnings. Um, uh, despite the fact that the sector has worked very well, we've been backing this call for the last two years. We've written it, but we still, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the business momentum there and the multiples are also fairly. Uh, uh, reasonable. On the negative side, we are sort of you know cautious on FMCG, uh, both on the multiples as well as uh, as well as earnings uh, earnings there. You're not convinced with you know there was a very synchronous kind of a positive commentary from all consumer companies, Dabur, Britannia, Marico. All of them started talking about second half recovery and green shoots. You're not convinced, or you would like to see more evidence before you go positive on no, that? No, Ajay. I mean, yeah, yeah. So honestly speaking, I think. 
the economy going forward and i'm all assuming continuity right if if the market goes for defensive tomorrow and you know the nature of consumption in india changes savings basket changes etc it's a different story but you know the, what what we see is a premiumizing consumer which is sort of able to meet uh, their basic needs so fmcg consumption in his basket is going to come down he's going to do more discretionary consumption premiumized consumption as well as savings right that's the that's a picture of the consumer we're looking at so broadly you know volume growth which has come down uh, for fmcg companies while they may be talking about a, a small two uh, two quarter sort of you know bubble here or there we think that the volume growth that has come down for fmcg companies is quite structural right so therefore and and valuations as you already know are anybody involved in the indian market you know fmcg companies have punchy valuations so uh, we are ignoring this you know small sort of you know upside that has happened in this quarter short covering based on positive commentary uh, we think if if the current dispensation continues the current regime continues uh, you know staple consumption is, especially in india will be weak thoughts on metals uh, interestingly the space is doing well and at least the large cap metal pocket in india all of them many of them have some special situation brewing but what are your thoughts on metals and also steel in particular yeah yeah so um, uh, ajay nothing you know very big there it's a global sector uh, very very noisy uh, we are sort of more positive non ferrous than ferrous broadly i believe it at that i don't really have a very very strong uh, call on metals at one time it's easier to call metals when they're at a peak or at a bottom but they're neither here nor there right now and it's very volatile sector i reserve my comment there and uh, the high frequency data which your team has been studying so net net uh, what is the forward looking picture on the economy which you're gathering from there yeah so uh, you know uh, uh, as i said uh, capex shoots are there private capex looking very good tax collections are good so in one way i mean you know it speaks to the consumer as well because in income tax collection is good um, uh, so uh, you know airline travel is good so so broadly on the high frequency data their numbers both ways we also put uh the quarterly reports of earnings you know there so quarterly reports are are sort of makes as i said the consumer is not out of the woods they had a tough uh, you know couple of years under covid and it's just been one or two years so they have not completely repaired their balance sheets but where we are seeing good green shoots uh is on the investment side which is what is going to lead the recovery uh, for the next 5 years we let you go on that one thanks so much for joining us with your thoughts on the market and the areas uh, in the we'll take a